so we are coming to the tail end so now having discussed all this about various abhimani devatas how does it operate in action how does it operate in 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 our daily lives let me take an example of the family of shiva shiva parvati ganesha and shanmuka let let me take these examples to illustrate how the vedic philosophy evolves so there is a gita verse second chapter 42 which says mam imam pushpitam vacham pravadanti avipashtita vedavadaratah vartha na anyad asti iti vadina in the sense the, the fellows who look at the vedas in a very superficial sense will just look at the flowery language of the vedas but actually will not understand what the deeper meanings of the philosophical meanings of the vedas so when we talk about shiva rudra ganesha and shanmuka let us see what the vedic philosophical view on this okay now as i told you before shiva is the abhimani devata of the mind parvati is the abhimani devata of walk ganesha is the abhimani devata of akasha so that fits in extremely well what the mind thinks we speak which travels in space in air which is this combination mind walk and akasha which is shiva parvati and ganesha so they all have a relationship with regards to how we conduct our uh, our our, uh, our own um, you know life now if you take um, mind for example mind is key shiva is the key component there in in uh, in uh, bhagavad gita krishna says uttare tatmana atmanam na atmanam avashade atmanyeva atmana bandhu atmayeva rupuratmana amruta bindu upanishad says mana eva manushyanam karanam bandha moksha yo ho he says this mind is the reason for your liberation mind is the reason for your bondage okay so try and control the mind and try and focus your mind in the right direction so mind is very important who is the controller of the mind we think we are the controller of the mind that is a fundamental mistake that we are making we are not the controller of the mind the abhimani devata of the mind who is shiva is controlling the mind the shiva himself is under the control of his antaryami so that is the sequence that the vedic philosophy takes walk parvati and ganesha is interesting because he is the abhimani devata of space now then there is a uh, there is a lot of things about ganesha but the number 21 and uh, we all know in ganesh chaturthi and so on there are so many things about 21 that comes in ganesha and some of you will be more familiar than me around the 21 modakas and 21 other things of flowers and everything else that's given to ganesha why so if you look at the brahmanda and if you look at the tatva abhiman the tatvas of brahmanda and i have listed them five components of the mind five components of indriya five components of tanmatra five components of karma indriyas and then the final evolute of the material universe is the panchabhutas and the first to come in panchabhuta is akasha and the akasha's abhimani devata is ganesha and that number is 21 when you look at the mahat tatva see the tatvas numbers Twenty-first tattva that comes out is Akasha, whose abhimani devata is Ganesha, and so is where your idea of twenty-ones of various things that you do for Ganesha. Now, yes, the Ganesha, that concept of Ganesha also then gives you an idea about you know mind, speech, and words that travel in space. So stop useless talk. Ganesha has big ears and big noses. Why? Because it's related to air. As I said, he is the Abhimani Devata of Akasha. Big ears to capture the sound waves. Big nose as for prana shakti to meditate and do dhyana. Small mouth. Stop useless talk. Elephants have big ears and big eyes. Keep eyes open. Keep your eye ears open. So those are all the information that you get. Now, for example, in Mandukya Upanishad. the the story of ganesha actually comes in mandukya upanishad and acharya madhvan talks about this in some great length so in mandukya upanishad for example if you look at the second verse so just to give you a background of mandukya upanishad it talks about consciousness we spent about this in november of last year talking about consciousness in upanishads and um, mandukya upanishad spends a lot of time about consciousness and how is linked to om the syllable om so it talks about the jagrati sthana so it says the first second month was sarvam etad brahma ayam atma brahma so ayam atma chatushpad jagrati sthanah bahih pragnyah saptangah ekona vimshati mukah stulabh uh, 
vaishwanara prathama pada okay so that i want you to focus on the the word that i have under, uh, underlined that saptanga eko na vimshati mukha so basically what the upanishad is saying is the the controller of the waking state of consciousness of the jiva is the supreme being or vishnu who has seven angas seven extremities and he's got 19 faces is how this describes so what does that mean so it's a very puzzling concept so basically what it means is this is the this is the rupa of vaishwanaraha as described in the vedas where vishnu has 19 heads the first the middle head is the face of an elephant and then there are 19 heads around it so when i say seven angas it means four hands two legs and an elephant trunk which is a form of this vaishwanaraha also called vishwambara murti so it, one vedic view that we are all familiar with and again as i said you will be more familiar than me as to how ganesha got his head and so on here is the vedic version of this the vedic version is there is a famous uh, upanishad word saying that yata yata upasate tataiva bhavati so as you worship so you become so the vedic view on this is ganesha the akasha abhimani devata did worship on the vishwambara murti form of the supreme being which is the form of an elephant and that is the reason why he got an elephant form so this is a vedic version and during the puranic times there are various other versions that have evolved about why ganesha had elephant forms okay now finally i want to say but what about skanda we all seem to have forgotten who skanda is and what is his role in vedic philosophy now skanda is a very exalted devata of vedic pantheon he ranks 18 along with his brother ganesha and what does he do he does lots of things we all know that he comes to kill taraka asura and so on but he is also the chief of the army of the devas but also he has six faces shan mukha shan is shan, six six faces why does he have six faces he has six faces for various reasons in the puranas that you will know about here is the vedic version of this he has got six faces because worshiping him will allow you to control the six terrible things that you can have kama krodha moha loba mada and matsara so six components that 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 primarily is 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 a result of your downfall so that one he controls so here look at the sequence here so you have chaturmukha who has got four heads shiva who has got five heads then you have shanmukha who has got six heads so there are all these kind of numbers that give you deeper philosophy hindu knowledge academy.com will celebrate vedic culture and present its philosophies to the modern hindu in an accessible format our ancient heritage is our greatest strength through preservation and dissemination together let us spread positivity in the world thank you for listening and welcome to hindu knowledge academy